So I picked up this Dell Precision T5810 workstation thingy here on eBay, threw in some upgrades based on my needs, along with some parts I'd lying around, and now I basically got a 2025 home lab workhorse. And it has one amazing feature that even most modern desktops don't have, but more on that shortly. This thing now has 14 cores, ECC memory, multiple NVMe drives, 10 gig networking, all in a machine that most people will pop into the bin, given the fact that it is nearly 10 years old. So in this video, I'll show you exactly what hardware is inside, the few upgrades that have transformed it, and help you decide if grabbing an old T5810 is actually worth it for your own home lab. So as I mentioned, this is a Dell Precision T5810, which was originally a workstation, not really a server, but the line is pretty blurred once you look at the specs. They're all over eBay and some refurb sites for silly money, and what you get is a solid chassis, a very, very good PSU, lots of PCI slots and plenty of RAM slots, and I mean lots and lots of dirt cheap upgradability. And the best part is that this platform still holds up in 2025. One thing I wanna point out is that this is a proprietary system. The motherboard, PSU, and even the fans are not replaceable with off-the-shelf parts. Though that's not necessarily a bad thing as there are plenty of spares on eBay for next to nothing. For my use case, which is testing VMs, running some services and Docker containers, and having a flexible lab box, it made more sense to revive something like this than to buy another brand new mini PC. So let's start with the CPU of this thing. This ship with a fairly basic Xeon CPU. It's a 6 core and 12 thread Xeon E5 1650 V3. There's nothing wrong with it and it's plenty fast but I ended up swapping it for a Xeon E5026 L V4 and the L in the SKU stands for low power which means the TDP is rated at 65 watts and the thing is the specs of this chip are absolutely mind-blowing. It's a 14 core 28 thread chip with 40 PCI lanes. This thing used to cost £1,300 back in 2016 and I picked it up for £24. See, the thing is, this CPU gives me plenty of cores for virtualization without turning it into a space heater or a screaming jet engine because these Dell workstations support a good range of E5 2600 V3 and V4 Xeon CPUs. But make sure to upgrade your BIOS because not all BIOS support the latest chips. So if you do decide to get one, you can often grab a better CPU for 15 to 20 quid and change how capable the system actually is. Now, mine also came with 32 gig of DDR4 ECC memory which is fast enough for a decent number of VMs and containers, though it's starting to show its age a little bit, being only 2133 megahertz. Now the board does have eight DIMM slots, so going up to 64 gig or more is definitely an option, but ask yourself if you really need it. For me, a 32 gig is plenty. Now storage is where it gets fun. Out of the box, these usually come with spinning disks. Obviously great for capacity, but not that great for speed. Now I had a couple of one terabyte SATA SSDs lying around, so I threw them in and my system actually came with a 500 gig SSD. But you obviously don't have to use SSDs. If you've got a couple of old hard drives sitting in a drawer, the T5810 has two drive bay adapters and plenty of SATA ports to drop them in and build this into a big cheap bulk storage for backups and media. But that'd be a bit of a waste in my opinion. The special source I was talking about at the beginning is this PCIe NVMe adapter. And I want to turn our attention to one feature that this motherboard has that most modern motherboards don't even support and that magic feature is PCI lane bifurcation and that means that I can use this NVMe card which holds four drives. This works because one of the slots is configured where it sees the four NVMe's as individual devices and the PCI slot is divided into four by four by four by four. This gives me silent crazy fast storage in a box that was never designed for NVMe originally. Now one thing you've got to keep in mind with these machines is that they do expect a graphics card as there's no built-in iGPU. So a graphics card isn't really optional here. Now this Quadro M4000 came with this machine when I bought it. It's not new, but for what I need it, display output, some basic acceleration and the option to pass it into a VM, it's absolutely perfect. It has four display outputs, four gig of VRAM and the performance is roughly on par with a GTX 1050 Ti, which is more than good enough for some dashboards, remote desktop and some light workloads. Now the nice thing is that workstation cards like these are absolute dirt cheap, so you don't have to burn the budget on a big GPU for your home lab. Now networking is where the real fun starts for me. Now out of the box this came with a standard gigabit NIC which is absolutely fine but one of the reasons this Dell Precision is so attractive is because of the number of PCI slots so I can do plenty of network upgrades. So what I ended up doing is adding an Intel X520 10 gig NIC, now this is an SFP card and a 2.5 gig NIC from Realtek that I just got on Amazon. Now the 10 gig network card gives me a super fast link straight to my router's 10 gig interface so inside my network I can move data at some serious speeds even though my internet connection is only 2 gig. Yes, 
I have a two gig FTTP connection here in the UK. Now the two and a half gig card is used for general purpose stuff around the house. Now let's turn attention to the one thing you've all been wondering about and that is noise and power. And one of the reasons I got the E52650L a V4, now this is a mouthful, is because of its low TDP. Now I did end up upgrading the original CPU that came with this machine to a 10 core 20 thread monster, but it was just way too hot where it was sitting. And this is why I decided to go with the 2650L version here. It gives me more cores, but at a much lower TDP. Now I do appreciate that the clock speeds have dropped, but for my needs, this is plenty. But in my setup, once it's cleaned and the airflow isn't fighting any dust bunnies, it sits comfortably and idle and only really ramps up when I'm pushing a load of VMs, but I don't have more than two running at any one time. It's not totally silent by any stretch, but it's more of a workstation hum than a data center scream, though I have plonked it in my living room for the time being, so it's effectively inaudible. And because I'm not running some 140 watt monster, the power draw is actually pretty sensible for something that has so many cores and all the drives. So the real question is, is the Dell Precision T5810 still worth buying in 2025? If you want loads of expandability, PCI lanes, ECC RAM, and proper networking options on a tight budget, this machine is incredibly hard to beat. You're not getting the lowest possible power drop, but for the price, the performance and flexibility are ridiculous. And the thing is, I haven't even mentioned how much I paid for this. And ultimately, I got this machine for £55. I think that is an absolutely insane bargain, given that these cost about £250 to £300 on eBay at this moment in time. The fact that I can do all these upgrades that I've just mentioned, I feel like I've ended up with a genuinely capable home lab box, which is exactly why I grabbed it. Now, the thing is, the hardware is only half the story. On top of this, I'm actually running Windows Server 2025, which I know is a bit of an unusual choice for home lab, but for my needs, this is absolutely spot on. It gives me everything I need with Hyper-V for VMs, Docker containers for services, and a familiar Windows environment to manage everything. But the thing is, I don't wanna cram that whole setup into this video. So in part two, I'll walk you through exactly how I configured Windows 2025 on this box, the roles I've installed on it, and how I'm handling VMs and Docker, and how I'm using it day to day. So make sure to like and subscribe to not miss out. But what I want to know from you is, is this something you're going to be running in the future? Because I think these machines are more than capable for most home lab users.